In data engineering, the big shift that is happening today is that the data producers are getting better at taking ownership of the data they produce. Uh, data contracts are a tool to help data owners to communicate the API for data. It expresses exactly what data is available to all consumers like schema, uh, semantics, update frequency, and data quality guarantees. Without such a data contract in place, there's a tendency to build big uh, spaghetti pipelines. These are monoliths of which no one is able to take ownership and that no one dares to touch. Introducing the data contracts enables breaking down those data monoliths into smaller pieces uh, so that uh, producers can take ownership. Every data set that is a handover between teams deserves a data contract. How are data contracts being used? Well, there's three use cases I want to highlight. The first one is communicating the API for data. When consumers uh, want to find or understand data, they should be discovering only the data that's covered by a data contract. The information in the data contract should contain all the details so that a consumer can start using that data. Uh, the contract here acts as a system of record for metadata that can be surfaced in tools like a data catalog. And that's because that is the place where consumers go and look to understand the data. Contracts can also be used to communicate upcoming changes like new columns appearing or deprecated columns that will disappear. Um, second uh, use case is protecting storage. Databases, they have schemas to prevent bad data from getting inserted into tables. Uh, Kafka has schema registries to prevent bad data from entering topics. And the same way, and just as common, the analytical data sets, uh, they will get data contracts to prevent bad data from getting stored in analytical data stores. Um, each time when new data gets produced, the new data is verified against the contract. And that's usually called enforcement. But enforcement is most powerful when it's combined with the circuit breaker pattern. So that pattern ensures that data not complying with the contract is not stored and hence it's not made available to consumers. That's real prevention and increases trust in data. So the last use case I want to mention here is protecting usage. Data consumers often have much more intimate knowledge about the data. They may have specific requirements for their usage and consumers should be able to propose data quality checks to be included in the contract. And with those extra data quality checks, consumers can help create much better coverage over the data that they use. That concludes the usage, which means like um, API for data, protecting storage and protecting usage. But those are the three key use cases for data contracts. Well, as data producers are taking more ownership of their data, it's quite important to provide convenience to those data engineers building pipelines. Data contracts is a new form of checking data quality in those pipelines, and it's a form that fits a lot better with data producers. So over the last couple of years, we've built an execution engine for checking data quality that is optimized, quite complete and open source. At Soda, we think that that execution engine for data contracts is important and not the language itself. So if you want to use Soda's data contract language, fine. If you want to use one of the other data contract flavors, that's fine too. As new data contract languages would pop up, we will actively be helping to connect Soda's engine to every promising contract language. And so as a user, you can be sure that Soda is a choice for the long run. All right, let's take a look at how Soda data contracts uh, work in action. So here you have a data contract file, it's a YAML file, specifies the data set name, which is the table name in this case. You have the schema here with all the columns listed. Um, there's an ID column, and in this case, the data type is specified. So that means the data type is checked as well. There's a not null and a unique constraints with bo which both get translated to uh, Soda CL checks as it's executed. Then you have the next column here with a numeric uh, data type, and there is a validity specification here, which triggers a validity check. Um, then here there are, there's an example of uh, the country column having valid values list managed in the contract. And of course, all the columns specified here have to be present and non-specified columns have to be not present. Um, and then at the bottom, you see data quality checks, which could come also from, for instance, analysts or business users. 
um, in this case, an average check and a miss missing percentage check. Uh, all of the power of SodaCL is, of course, available in these checks. And as we then, uh, in the documentation, there's like the snippet on how to execute this contract. Uh, that's, of course, embeddable into any pipeline, like an Airflow um, or any other orchestration tool that you have. Um, and when we execute that, then you get, of course, the translated SodaCL, uh, which is visible and that of the contract has passed. So that's uh, the thing you can build into anywhere in your pipeline and stop bad data if you need to. With that, thank you very much.